and it, we're on second floor and we're walking classroom to classroom and I've got an Expo pen in my hand and I pass Thane's glass door right there and I'm pissed. And it was, it was this moment of frustration and he's not hearing us and he's not willing to have this conversation. Obviously it's Expo pen, you just erase it like that. Not a huge issue. Didn't really understand the severity of it. Didn't think of it as vandalism or anything like that. Um, and just kind of did it. So my name is Will Holland, uh, senior at Gonzaga, uh, majoring in environmental studies and sustainable business, and I'm the president of Fossil Free Gonzaga. I, I remember that day really clearly though. We submitted this resolution to the university, which was signed on to by uh, the student body, by the faculty senate, by the, um, the staff assembly at Gonzaga, all these different bodies that make up the university. So we thought, let's deliver this, and if we have the support of everybody, then there's no reason that we can actually do this, that we can't get it done. Um, and, and in the university's response, it was a, a laid out email with, I think, five points of action for what they were going to do in the future. So that first point being um, $10 million of the endowment, approximately the same amount of money that's invested in the fossil fuel industry into you know companies and corporations that supported a renewable future and that were doing the right thing with in terms of energy, in terms of social justice, all this different stuff. We thought that was great. It, it, again, it calls to the fact that we got this issue on the table and the university made concrete action in, in, in response to that. The word divestment in that resolution that they sent back was, wasn't said once, wasn't addressed once. So in September on the 20th, which was uh, shortly before our meeting with the investment committee, at Gonzaga students organized by Fossil Free Gonzaga, about 300 kids, met up with the Spokane climate strike and met up downtown with this huge multi-thousand person rally, which was huge. Um, so, so we were really fortunate not only to have as many people as we did show up to, to, to join the Spokane rally, um, but to be a part of something that was out of the context of specifically this university. I think so often we can get caught up in divestment at Gonzaga and what it means to be, to be here in the now, but obviously this is an issue that is so centered around like the globe and so centered around the world. So for us to be able to join in something that wasn't just a Gonzaga event was, was huge for us because it, it, it proved the validity of our argument, which is that this isn't just an issue for Gonzaga. This isn't just, this is everywhere. So at the Spokane Climate Strike, we met at Gonzaga, the Gonzaga student body, and we were gonna walk to meet up with the group. Here comes Thane rolling in on his lime scooter, pulls up right next to me. Um, and I was talking to some friends, he taps me on the shoulder and he says, You're, you, you helped organize this, right? And I was like, yeah, I did. I'm also, we're cousins, by the way. So I showed him this relationship and he's like, oh, no way. It was that quick second where he was like, oh, well, we should sit down and, and you know, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one basically in a small setting and, and really get to it. And I was really excited to get to his true opinion, to just hear him without his advisors and without all these other people that are speaking in his ear about the issue. I was excited to just get that, that unfiltered opinion. So um, once again, a week before this meeting's supposed to happen, I get an email from his secretary saying, uh, the CFO, Joe Smith, will be joining in on the meeting. And, and that was fine. You know, we know Joe Smith. We've, we've heard what he has to say. Once again, we wanted this really unfiltered opinion and to have this, this CFO talking in his ear the whole time and to kind of be speaking over his opinions, it, it really didn't help us get to what Thane thought was right. So fast forward two weeks later to our next fossil free meeting. We sat here and we went an hour over. We had this huge two hour meeting where we had like 15 people in the room and everybody was just pissed about, you know, how the meeting went and that we couldn't get his opinion on stuff. And it was, it was, it was really tough. That same night, Ellen Bradley, the vice president of Fossil Free and I, uh, went to College Hall like we sometimes do to write on the whiteboards in there to say Fossil Free meets seven o'clock every Wednesday. And I passed Thane's glass door right there and I'm pissed. And I wrote divest in like block letters on his, on his glass door. And the university acted pretty like pretty quickly on that. They saw the video footage, I guess tracked me down through some Jason Bourne extra stuff. I don't, I don't know how it happened, but um, got an email the following week uh, about a conduct hearing that I was supposed to have with the university. Ellen had one too. I ended up getting like eight hours of community service and then uh, had to write formal letters of apology to not only uh, Thane McCullough, but to the Fossil Free group. But to see that the university would act so thoroughly and, and promptly on the smallest little thing, I think, you know, kind of 
took us to the mindset of, wow, so if we really tried to elevate this, this could be mayhem, this could be total chaos. It's time for escalation. We're tired of these cyclical conversations that we have twice a year with the same people who don't care about what we have to say and don't understand where we're coming from. So being so frustrated and angry is in line with the national coalition has kind of pushed everybody around the, around the country to, to move forward in kind of an escalation manner with divestment. Um, so I think moving forward in this semester, um, we're gonna really try to, to, to push that home and to do things maybe outside of our comfort zone and to establish that, that communication of, you know, we're tired of just sitting around and, and taking this. Like you guys aren't doing anything on divestment. It's on the table. You're talking about it. You're aware. Let's, let's do something about it.